Uh, dear colleagues, good morning. Uh, it is 12 o'clock, one minute. Uh, we have several colleagues still joining, but they will join. Uh, my name is Armand Gutmann. So I represent business consulting company Meta Advisory. <clears throat> uh, we help our clients to uh, influence uh, decisions in, in, uh, in the government uh, and uh, also um, on the sustainability issue. Uh, but uh, today we have digital transformation. Uh, this is uh, a uh, this is the second seminar under the main title digital transformation, which, uh, as you know, is the second largest priority in the European Union and also in Latvia. Um, <clears throat> this uh, series of seminars is organized uh, together with the representation of the European Commission in Latvia. <clears throat> uh, we were having the first seminar on cybersecurity last month. There will be in, in May on uh, energy sector and in autumn on health and other sectors. So digital transformation is obviously a very large uh, issue and large fields. The main aim of these uh, seminars to encourage investments into digital transformation. Uh, and the target audience is uh, uh, municipalities and companies. Uh, and uh, as always, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, main parts of our participants come from municipalities and, uh, and companies. Uh, uh, we have uh, close to 90 persons registered for today's event. Uh, and from experience, we know that uh, uh, more or less 1,000 uh, afterwards watch the seminar in uh, recorded version in, in Facebook or in uh, YouTube. The list of speakers, as always, we try to combine different persons from different institutions, uh, from the European Commission, from the government, from private enterprises, and from business associations and municipalities. So we get a cocktail of uh, perspectives. And this is also today. We have uh, uh, several colleagues representing different sectors. Uh, Mr. Martin Zemitis, economist at the European Commission. Uh, Dennis Gatsicha, Schneider Electric, Baltic General Manager. Viestur Zeps, Chairman of the Freeport Riga uh, and member of the Riga City Council uh, Janis Bertis, Chairman of the Board Association for Construction Industry Digitalization and Construction Innovation, and the company ITED. ITED. And uh, Martin Schwanax, Managing Director, Alliance of Real Estate Developers. So we have a, a good cocktail, different perspectives. That's the most valuable thing. <clears throat> we start, as always, with uh, uh, presentations, uh, and then we go to questions and answers. We try to uh, be uh, more or less 10 minutes uh, for each presentation, more or less, uh, and then we have time for questions and answers. Please uh, uh, write, your uh, yeah, uh, write your questions in chats. Uh, uh, of course, there's also uh, uh, possibility to raise a, a question or a, a comment afterwards in life. Uh, uh, obviously, if, if somebody would, would like to do it, uh, we can use it, this opportunity to speak live. But please also during presentations, write your questions in, in the chat. And we, uh, as always, we target to close within hour and 15 minutes, more or less. So these are my introductory uh, remarks and we <clears throat> go then to the first uh, presentation Martin Zemit is uh, Martin please uh, thank you very much Armands uh, and uh, thanks to the uh, great audience we have this morning Armands was speaking of cocktails I hope that we have a nice green smoothie today not a Molotov cocktail <laughs> in, in in fact uh, it's it's a great pleasure again to to, to work uh, together with meta advisory uh, we've been working together for uh, more than a year uh, uh, to discuss the green uh, and the digital transitions which are of course uh, very high uh, on both the citizens agenda and also very high on the European Commission's agenda. 
and doubtless also it's an important uh, it's an important uh, topic for the for the cities and all the stakeholders. Uh, smart cities and digitization. Uh, there's probably not a city in the world which does not want to be smart. I think a dumb city is not a very attractive value proposition and a very attractive slogan to attract uh, talent and capital. Um, and this is a very brutal competition that the cities are in uh, these days. Um, a few cities actually manage to become smart uh, if you measure it by sort of the quality of life, uh, the price of real estate, and, and you know, if cities manage to attract more people than repulse people. Uh, and in Europe, there is a fairly strong consensus uh, that a smart city is a green and digital city. These are, are necessary, but of course not sufficient ingredients for, for being smart. Uh, we, we're, we're situated in the, in the north of Europe, and this is a very competitive region. And experience from, uh, from the Nordics and Scandinavia suggests that also good governance, uh, transparency, uh, inclusiveness, and responsiveness to uh, sort of local democracy uh, are, are key factors of, of success uh, for the cities to become smart. So it's not just about the digital solutions or not just about the claims of the cities to want to become climate neutral by a certain date or not letting uh, cars with, with, with big exhaust uh, in the city centers. It's also about inclusiveness and transparency and listening to what the citizens uh, want, you know, because they are the real, their owners, owners of the cities. So cities are in a huge uh, pressure to change um, everywhere. They are in the race for talent and investment and the competition is, is really quite, uh, quite tough and brutal. By 2030, uh, 100 cities in Europe will become climate neutral. Uh, this is the ambition and this is, uh, you know, a very uh, real, realistic perspective. And this will cause, of course, uh, a lot of significant uh, disruption and creative chaos. And digitization will be a big part of the puzzle. So the cities will need to, to learn to collect, uh, to harness, and to capitalize on data. Data, which is the, the, the gold uh, or the, the new currency, if you will, uh, of the future. Okay, so the data, first of all, needs to be collected. And so we need to invest into sensors of all sorts. Of those businesses who are into censoring, you know, this is your big, your big chance. Uh, the Minister of Interior of Latvia has spoken about cameras. We know that in cities such as London, we have cameras everywhere, but this is just a tiny fraction uh, of, the, of, the, of the solution. We, of course, know the proverbial example of Shanghai, which has improved uh, that the traffic, you know, by, by, by censoring, by, by, by smart streets, you know, where the cars are being directed to the, to the closest uh, traffic, uh, traffic lots so that uh, with the least amount of emissions. But there's lots of good, good examples of this. So we need to be able to collect the data. But not only we need to collect the data, we need to also be, to be able to aggregate, to, to collect it uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a big way. And, and I think this is, uh, there's an important development, you know, Latvian um, energy uh, system, uh, distribution system operator, Sadalas Tegels, will be investing quite significantly uh, from the European uh, recovery and resilience uh, facility into electricity grid development to make it fit for purpose, uh, to, to allow this uh, uh, better decentralized generation, you know, the solar panels, the sort of the small um, solutions, and also the charging, electrical charging infrastructure, which we so dire, uh, you know, direly need. You know, this is another big change. The face of the cities is changing. We're moving from the fossils into electric and some cities into even, even hydrogen. And, and this, of course, changes the face, the face of the city. So the Sutherland Steagles will, will invest into aggregation. But also we have another interesting legal uh, development uh, here, here in Latvia. This is not so new in some other European uh, countries, but this is relatively new here. And we have this uh, amendment on the energy communities, right? So uh, essentially you can have uh, an energy solution for the whole uh, community, for, for a quartal, for a micro region. Um, and in fact, you don't need to have a solar panel on the top of your house. You can have, you know, a share of a solar panel uh, in, in a solar park someplace and, and, and use this energy uh, for, for, you know, virtually, of course, because the infrastructure uh, will, will need to be built. But at least legally, there is a framework which allows for these energy communities, which is very important. And I hope that, that also Riga City uses this uh, well. So then once we have the aggregated data, we need to analyze it, we need to visualize it, we need to feed it into applications. Um, 
And, 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 you know, a good example are these small apps, for instance, if you have, you know, your solar panels on your roof and, and you have a small application, you can see how much you're using, how much you're feeding into the grid. This is a small, small scale uh, to illustrate, but of course we need to scale up uh, the, these type of, of solutions and make them fit for the, for the city. Okay, and and of course we need the talent. Uh, we need the people, the brain, the the the, the human talent uh, to be able to apply the data, build the businesses, and and use the use the data as inputs for for policy making. And of course we don't need to reinvent the bicycle. You know this is how the smartest cities do it. We need to learn from the smartest of the smart. Um, and 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 of course a smart city uh, is not uh, just a concept. It consists of of, of smart uh, buildings and smart communities, quarters, uh, quartals, micro regions, and, and pilot territories. And we have some, some interesting examples in Riga City, such as the Vefresh, right? And of course, buildings are big contributors to, to CO2. 40% uh, of emissions come from buildings, okay? So if we're gonna reach climate neutrality, we must tackle, uh, tackle buildings, of course. And of course, uh, here in, 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 in this country, in Latvia, we have a relatively uh, heavy endowment, you know, this legacy of the Soviet era, the multi-apartment uh, buildings with condominiums and only 20% private homes, 80% of people living in, in these multi-apartment homes. So therefore we need not only focus on new uh, build, new build, you know, where of course uh, the European norms are very stringent uh, for two years already, all the public buildings that we build must be near uh, zero uh, emission buildings, but we also need to invest into renovation and, and we cannot only look to the future. We only also need to look a little bit to the past and we need to renovate this renovation wave, at least doubling the rates. I would say that in Riga, we in fact need to triple the rate that we've seen so far to achieve climate neutrality. Um, by 2050. And of course, this is a competition and Lithuania, Estonia have announced that in the building sector, they will achieve this climate neutrality, at least C-class energy efficiency for all the buildings by 2050. You know, uh, it's not so clearly said in, in Latvia's renovation national plan, uh, but hopefully we're, we're, uh, we're on this track already because buildings are extremely important for climate neutrality. So once we renovate, we also must make the same investment uh, by the same investment, we also mu must make buildings smarter, not just better bricks and better insulation around the rotten core and old wires. You know, once we uh, make the effort to renovate, uh, we also need to be, be making the buildings smart, okay? Um, but not only smart, also make them beautiful. And that's where the European uh, new Bauhaus initiative comes in. That this is not only just about the CO2 and, and the climate, uh, the, the carbon footprint. This is also making our communities aesthetic, uh, a good quality of life, you know, so that the price of the real estate goes up and people see that in their, in their pockets, that these investments are really paying off. So uh, Tartu is a good example where they had a pilot project where they made, you know, a whole community of these old buildings, not only a very, very energy efficient with solar panels, on the roofs, but also um, uh, a, a playground of artists, you know, and, and now the buildings, of course, not only are, are very nice in terms of efficiency, but also look very nice. Um, so a lot of investment will be going into these areas, as Arman said, both green and digital. Uh, economist, uh, professor at the Stockholm School of Economics, Morten Hansen, whom I respect uh, uh, dearly, says that, uh, in fact, we are risking overinvestment into green and digital, that nothing is broken. In fact, the economy is back to its potential and we don't need to uh, invest. I would argue that in the Riga city, we need to invest a lot. I think we've seen a lot of uh, underinvestment uh, over, over the years. I think that the Lithuania, Estonia and Scandinavian region is charging ahead. There is a clear market gap. We need, we need to plug it. Uh, we need to address this market gap. And of course, the EU is a loyal and trusted investor. You know, with the private investment is a bit more thin in coming. The EU is investing heavily uh, and we need to be able to use this EU money as the seed capital, as the seed money to attract co private capital. Because with public money only, we're not gonna achieve uh, the smart city, we're not gonna achieve climate neutrality. This will not be, uh, this will not be sufficient. So um, from the commission side, we applaud uh, the, the, the new mayor and the new city, uh, city council uh, to focus on attracting private investment by a new agency. You know, this is a very welcome step. Uh, and uh, for today's discussion, I wish that we come one step closer to a smart city in practice, that we don't just talk the talk, but we walk the walk. And in fact, that we become quite practical because um, you know, we need to have lofty concepts. We need to have the, the long-term vision to climate neutrality and the smart city, but we also need to be able to take the, 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 the small steps, uh, the small policy decisions sort of every day. Um, and, 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 uh, um, and, 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 and of course this is, uh, 
you know, uh, this agility and ability to be nimble uh, is to be valued as much as sticking to the, to the grandiose plan of where the city wants to go. So it's important to have a, 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 good, a good cocktail of the private and the public sector, both, uh, you know, the users of the city and the planners of the city, you know, the businesses that make, make it move, and also the sort of the workers for, the, for, the, for this economy. Uh, we're in for a great ride. Uh, this will be disruptive. But this will be quite uh, quite an interesting ride. And so for those of us who are living in cities, and increasingly all of us are, even though some of us are escaping the city, you know, from the suburbs, uh, our kids uh, will be coming back to the coming back to the city you know that that is the trend um and, and 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 of course this is this is extremely exciting and presents a lot of opportunities for different different businesses so armand uh, thanks these are my introductory comments I, I hope we have a very nice and and productive discussion today uh martin thank you uh so indeed so <clears throat> we hear from you that the field is extremely large data aggregation buildings renovation green elements the same community energy production new themes uh, and so on and so on so indeed it's a large uh, large change ahead of us lofty concepts also a good expression we have to see that we don't go this way uh, but uh, <clears throat> let me turn to the second the speaker, Dennis Katsicha, Schneider Electric Baltic General Manager. Uh, Dennis, please. Uh, uh, yes, it is, uh, it is correct, please. Just a second, I will be ready. A second, yeah. So, can you see the full screen? Yes. Can you see? Yeah. Can you see the full screen? Okay. So thank you, Armands. Um, and I will continue um, the presentation coming from the Schneider Electric. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining this presentation. And my pleasure to be part of today's Smart Cities. Uh, uh, we will actually uh, focus on the uh, digital transformation, digitalization in the building se sector. And I would like definitely to say thank you to the Meta Advisory for being part of, uh, of this cocktail. So many of us gathered uh, here uh, play a role in the building industry as developers, owners, uh, tenants, operators of the buildings. And definitely we contribute and often responsible for the impact uh, our buildings uh, have on people and the environment. So the way buildings are designed, built, operated and maintained is under increasing scrutiny. And we are constantly facing uh, mounting regulatory and uh, occupant pressures. This is the call for the change. And as a building industry, uh, we definitely need to uh, define our roles, our practices, uh, our buildings, and uh, also adapt them to meet the new requir requirements uh, that are um, facing us and around us. So I believe that each of us uh, uh, will be asked to do our parts. And if we don't, uh, then we definitely will have a risk uh, to decrease the value of, of the buildings and increase uh, potential operational cost and making our buildings less attractive to tenants and the occupants and we will see later uh, in my presentation why so as the building stakeholders it's our responsibility to look at the challenges facing uh, our industry and also to respond to the call for the change to ensure we have a future in this business today i will share uh, a schneider electric vision for navigating this change and creating the buildings of the future so building of the future presentation and self design to give the audience an overview of the industry and how to overcome, uh, how to overcome, uh, overcome the obstacles and why they should partner with, uh, with Schneider. But before we uh, review the buildings of the future framework, uh, how we define it, let's take a closer look at uh, why we actually uh, have the building industry and why it's actually uh, must adapt to survive. So the 2020 uh, brought historic change to many industries, including our building industry. And uh, many of us, uh, uh, many of our customers, uh, many of our partners uh, uh, asked us to help them to adapt to innovate in an environment that delivered both uh, low, low occupancy, especially uh, for the hotels and offices uh, and high demand requirements for the critical facilities, as you uh, definitely know. But even with the challenges we experience, an analyst are predicting that the building market uh, will continue to grow. And this is very, uh, very welcome news for all of us. But the recent challenges uh, have put a massive spotlight 
because of their digitization, digital transformation, and also the electrification uh, that we're already on the way and moving into the uh, override. And here's why. For decades, uh, building life cycles uh, has been cited for its inefficiencies in all phases across the construction and operation. Stages both for both the new buildings and existing ones. So we don't we don't speak only here about the existing ones, but also about, uh, about the new ones. And the industry uh, need uh, uh, digitalization injections uh, to help deliver better and more efficient outcomes. And then uh, we, as the Schneider, we uh, we see four critical areas where the industry must provide the better outcomes. The first one is sustainability. Environmental and business challenges are forcing us to examine the role. Uh, uh, what we face in terms of the carbon emissions and the costly waste. Buildings consume about 30% of world energy. So uh, within the construction and operation phases and account of more, for almost 40% of annual global greenhouse gases. So, and here, uh, when we speak about the future of the building, uh, especially when it comes to the construction and operation of them, uh, both for the new and retrofit is the, where we actually have the possibility either to uh, to win the battle uh, against the climate change or to lose the battle. Another one is resiliency. The need for resilient building has never been greater uh, and building operators and managers face the daunting task of keeping operations running smoothly in times of crisis. Because in, in front of us, we, uh, we face uh, different uh, disasters. Uh, what we actually saw in the, in the uh, past years, coming from the droughts to the cyber attacks and, uh, and, and so on. Another one is efficiency. So greater than 30% of the energy is wasted in the building. And when we speak about is wasted and uh, you could easily change the world of uh, uh, energy to the and to put world space. So what I want to say, even in the pre-pandemic, we could say that typically in the buildings, approximately 30% of wasted space. So. And also the last one, I would say one of the also key elements, people. Uh, so the world population is spending most of their uh, lives indoors. In fact, it's estimated that uh, around 90% of our lives will, we're gonna spend in the near future inside, let's say indoors. And basically uh, occupant productivity, health and safety will drive a new era in the building and facilities managers moving from a facility to a people-centric approach. So that never been before. And there are two basic trends that are redefining how we design, build, operate, and maintain uh, both uh, uh, the new buildings and the existing uh, the new buildings and the existing ones. The first actually trend is the digitization, quite what we're basically discussing here with the internet of things, big data, artificial intelligence, uh, we definitely have possibility to digitize and connect all the systems inside the building and get the information what we need. So previous speaker, Martin was also discussing about the data and how, uh, what value it actually gives. At the same time, uh, at the same time, electrification is driving a dramatic shift to more renewable sources um, and possibility actually to, to use it on the on different scales. So electric, uh, electric builds a green, uh, green, greener future. The world is beginning to substitute uh, electrical, electric, uh, uh, basically uh, electric technology uh, versus the combustion fuel technology, particularly in areas like space and water heating as an example. So we have much more possibilities with the electrification here. And this is what we call in our company, the new all digital, all electrical world enables us to rethink the entire building life cycle for the existing and the new buildings. It gives us the foundation what we need to create and retrofit the buildings that uh, to be more sustainable, more resilient, hyper-efficient and the people-centric. And the new all digital, all electric world and with the right innovation and plan, we can definitely and in a way, the industry and overcome the challenges what we face. For decades, we have been working with our customers to, to, to solve the energy management and uh, automation challenges. Based on these learnings, we have created a framework for the building industry that would help building owners, operators, and occupants uh, to thrive. Our building of the future vision focuses on the ingredients needed for the future proof uh, buildings become, uh, would become uh, with the better outcomes for people and the environment. 
And uh, our plan uh, focuses on the four key princ principles, their sustainability. And when we speak here about sustainability, we speak about returning resources to our planet versus only using resources. You know, this is around uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of the companies, a lot of the governments talking about this. The resiliency and the ability to withstand both of the internal and external changes, what I also mentioned previously, achieve, achieving hyper efficiency by leveraging real time uh, real time data to be more responsive, to deliver more. More, more, more efficiency and people centricity, offering a safe and healthy environment and, uh, that exceeds the expectations of the, of the tenants. Often these items are viewed as the trade-offs. No building can achieve all of all aspects, but we, in fact, we, we believe this is possible. Each of these areas that are steps uh, uh, our customers are taking to reach their goals and all these principles are applicable to both new and existing buildings across, across the building life cycle. So, and let's like take a cl uh, closer look at sustainability and our vision and building of the future will be a net zero uh, carbon by 2050. So let's say less than 30 years ahead of us. And here I would like to consider transformation as a move from where we are today to where we could be in the future. Sustainability impact is increasingly financial as well. It's becoming a, a criteria for a company investment risk so for the investors to look at the uh, long-term risk let's put it this way uh, buildings of the future will be also more resilient this means you will be able to operate more remotely buildings remotely the building's power supplies will run continuously and the mission critical infrastructure and IT and electrical uh, electric distribution equipment will be protected and secure the third key principle in our buildings of the future vision is hyper-efficiency. So hyper-efficiency make all other principles possible. Advances in the technology and the IoT enable devices and uh, uh, operators and owners uh, to use big data and artificial intelligence, uh, intelligence to uh, significantly lower operating cost and the impact. To drive hyper-efficiency across the building, you need end-to-end uh, -end digital architecture in order to have more uh, efficient decision making uh, in the process. And finally, buildings need to exceed people's expectations for safety, health, comfort, and um, well being, especially now. We have looked at four foundational principles, but I want to be sure uh, to keep in view that uh, the biggest impact we, we, can, uh, we can achieve when they work together. And buildings of the future put people's needs and expectations at the forefront and enhance. Um, key aspects like, such as the health, wellness of its occupants, which has definitely becomes uh, more and more important, especially after the dramatic changes what we uh, recently had. And for building to be truly people-centric, and there are several things that need to be taken into consideration, making buildings safer, improving occupant, uh, occupant comfort and experience, and creating uh, more healthy buildings. And then I would like you know to give uh, just one of the example is actually coming from our company. Uh, we have, I mean, we have many of examples uh, inside our companies also here uh, with, our, with, our, with our partners and so on. But here is really an interesting example and why, because it gives actually uh, uh, the variety of different options. What what can you do even with the existing? And not only when we speak about digitization, we should uh, concentrate only, for example, on the new buildings on the greenfield. Let's take a, a look at real example on how we succeeded in optimizing energy uh, uh, at uh, one of our Schneider Electric building, and basically it's in Singapore, East Asia, and uh, Japan headquarter of Schneider Electric and building called uh, Kaling Pool. So, and the key ambitious, uh, the ambitious goal of uh, retrofitting on 25, 25 year old building and turning it into our uh, building of the future using our own ecostructure solution. Ecostructure, we call it IoT platform, basically, uh, which consists of the several layers, such as sensors, uh, uh, control, and then application, application software analytics. I will, I will give you a bit uh, of explanation later on. And also the building one, the building and the construction authority uh, certification in Singapore uh, and uh, received a dedicated award as the first office building in Singapore to be certified on the, according to new guidelines. This is nine story building cover a total gross floor area of 18,500 square meters and has a, a house for the approximately one, uh, 1,250 employees. 
And uh, the objective was to achieve 100 carbo uh, carbon neutrality by 2020. So, and um, when we speak here 100, we speak about 25% by design, 50% uh, 25 by operational efficiency and the remaining 50% by switching to the renewable energy. So that's the way how we see to achieve the 100. Building itself has more than 5,000 connect points across 1,100 uh, Schneider Electric devices for the data, uh, data collection, control and data analytics. So basically sensors, let's put it this way, all products within, uh, within the sensors. Uh, data is collected using disconnected products or also for, for better understanding the sensors. We have also products, basically all the products, what we call connected products with the IoT enabled functionality. Let's put it uh, in the more easy way. This is the sensors. Our apps, software and analytics analyze the data received from the edge control. Edge control, we just call the second layer, basically controls, PLCs, BMS, building management system, which collects all the data from the, all the sensors. And, um, with all the solution helping to improve occupant satisfaction productivity with our range of the uh, software solutions such as building advisor, workplace advisor, and more. This is the dedicated solutions, the software or services based on the data we collect. This is what why it's so important to, the, to get all of this data and then put it uh, into more analysis and then to, uh, to act accordingly. Then if we look, um, uh, on this particular renovated building in the, uh, back three years ago, we made a few key changes <clears throat> and we started actually with the sustainable rooftop. Just to give you an overview how, I mean, some pot what potential solution could be. First of all, we installed solar panels. In fact, uh, 80 of them. The solar panels were able to uh, supply renewable energy and the building monthly energy consumption of uh, 200 uh, overall building monthly energy consumption is uh, 220 megawatts. So building runs on 100% renewable solar energy during the daytime, starting from the 9.30 a.m. until the 4.30 afternoon. So powered by this 80 solar panels on the roof. And then in addition, we also have 10 panels on the ground. We also installed big window panels to enable more light into the building. So the design helped us to transform the facade uh, of the 25 uh, year old building and help to save from energy. We also installed a chiller plant that acts as a centralized cooling system. Uh, uh, the chiller plant sends the data inside in real time to the building, uh, uh, building uh, um, the construction authority. And this is the company which actually owns uh, several, several buildings. And on the, uh, the data sense online within the uh, second and to all for real time monitoring. All this come together in performance serving on the, on the portal. And then BCA, the company who actually owns, could easily provide billing owners when they log onto the chiller efficiency and also to compare uh, several buildings, what they own, for example, for the similar efficiency, the uh, so called chiller plant performance across multi, uh, multiple buildings within the portal, for example. And so on, and to identify underperforming buildings. Altogether, the smart smart rooftop is integrated with the real uh, real time data and integrated BMS BMS uh, BMS. And here I mean by the building management system levels and collect the weather forecast, for example, data to give advanced forecasting of solar energy generation to increase energy efficiency. Um, and on the ground floor. We have an additional 10 solar panels to increase our energy input. We also have electric decal charge station for the convenience of our employees. And lastly, we also have battery energy storage system uh, to store the solar energy in the daytime to use it during the night. And today, the focus of the advanced workplace technology has shifted to the enhancement of the occupant well-being business performance and employee engagement. So we, 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 we actually, I mentioned in the previously that as key also aspect that we move now from the facility towards the uh, uh, tenants being or the occupant being in the building itself. So in, in order to ensure the well-being of our employees and continued compliance with the government regulations, of course, it's a case by case and country by country, we made use of the uh, such solution what we have like workplace advisor, engage enterprise and building advice in order to ensure uh, space management, occupant well-being, operational efficiency, 
And then we also have space management, uh, what we able to deliver with, uh, with our EcoStructure Workplace Advisor uh, in order to ensure safe distancing, monitor occupancy levels, adapt office layout. And we have also the same EcoStructure Workplace Advisor um, in order to uh, ensure and confirm such things like uh, optimal humidity, check air circul uh, circulation, adaptive lighting and temperature adjustment, for example, light intensity can be adjusted depends on the user need uh, if uh, for example you sit near the window have more natural light if you are actually a bit far from the window you have less and so on all of these steps actually help to reduce and um, and also to, to save the energy and same goes with the temperature adjustments for example uh, yeah, the temperature automatically adjusted to be cool in the meeting rooms when a compensation level detected and um, when there's no one, you can actually take this and actually bring to the other rooms, as an example. And we also concentrate on the operational efficiency, optimizing HVAC system and adjust the uh, uh, facility management services based on the utilization and people count, you know, drive use based cleaning, control access to amenities, optimizing building management and power system. And of course, engagement uh, also with the our solution, eco structure engagement enterprise. This is the variety of the, the, the things what we uh, we we have in our portfolio and what we did for ourselves. And moreover, we also engage enterprise application, which enables to reach uh, occupants with the mobile application, uh, uh, with the mobile application, and to provide all the updates, deliver digital services and key site information, even you know, like uh, during this specific time, challenging time with the COVID-19 information, can provide um, uh, on demand all this information on the real time. And Dennis, uh, Dennis one minute, please. Yeah, yeah, please. I, I'm just last slide. And um, at Schneider, so just summarizing, we know that the buildings are where we spend most of our lives and uh, we want to see buildings more sustainable, resilient, hyper-efficient, and people-centric. It has, has never been before. The future must start right now, and we're already helping to make that, uh, that possible. So the full benefits of the buildings of the future can only be achieving by integrating this, uh, all of these four elements properly. So this was exactly the end of the, my presentation. So thank you for listening. And if you will have any questions, please, uh, you can submit them in chat and for me to share more details. Thank you. Sorry for being a bit late. Uh, that's okay, Dennis. Thank you. Uh, we, I think, also the large content shows that uh, this uh, digitalization, electrification, and more healthy buildings. It's a large concept and requires a uh, lot of details, lot of working, and lot of new <laughs> equipment, lot of new uh, programs, applications, and so on. That's uh, really a new world, and I hope that uh, we get it also here in Latvia, not only in uh, uh, other countries where you have already a, a large experience, but we come to questions later. Now we <coughs> we turn to uh, Viestur Zeps, chairman of the Freeport Riga, member of the Riga City Council. Uh, Viestur's, please. Hello, uh, it's nice to see you. Thanks for inviting me. I hope uh, it's possible to hear me. Yes, it, it is working fine. Just a second, uh, I will try to share a screen second sorry i hope the screen is seen thank you uh, martin thank you armand thank you dennis so we see that there are plenty uh, of solutions already uh, there um, there in the market that can be implemented. Yeah. So my name is Viestur Zeps. I represent here Riga City Council, first of all. And then, of course, uh, I may say also a few words about uh, Riga uh, Freeport, uh, because there are also certain incentives, uh, incentives uh, which we are planning uh, in the field of digitalization and uh, digitalization and, let's say, um, uh, more new services. Yeah, so uh, let me run through, let's say, a few bullet points about uh, what in Riga City uh, we see as an opportunity for us in this uh, in this sense. So uh, for sure, uh, all cities would uh, be happy to call them smart uh, and uh, anyway, very good. Uh, but uh, the main issue here is how to use the best, uh, how to use uh, the infrastructure that uh, city has actually to integrate 
uh, new solutions, uh, to adapt to new solutions, and uh, actually to use uh, new technologies to serve the main purpose, to serve the residents, uh, to make uh, the services easier uh, and more accessible, and actually less uh, bureau bureaucratic. Yeah. So indeed, uh, indeed, the new government of uh, Riga has come uh, up with a relatively high ambition. Actually, uh, at a political level, yes, we would like to become, and actually we have the ambition to become a first climate neutral uh, capital in the nearest region. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, before the European set uh, targets already, uh, we would like to be pioneers here, but this is not the thing we can achieve in one day. Um, and then the second one is, of course, uh, ambition to open up an infrastructure, you know, because Riga as a relatively large player, uh, large player as a public sector player, uh, can encourage uh, different uh, use of technologies uh, like sensors, like lightning systems, uh, like whatsoever, to 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 become uh, initially as a first customer and at the second stage uh, actually to use in their daily daily lives. And of course, we put a lot of uh, efforts towards business and innovation development uh, actually in this uh, in this area becoming a more and more uh, more involved uh, also at the political level not just uh, at the department level as it was previously and before and the challenge of course uh, the challenge uh, it has already been mentioned this is uh, one of the challenges are, are data uh, acquisition of data processing of data and of course sharing of data in Riga city council we have say uh, plenty of informational systems uh, informational systems that are not yet uh, tied together yeah? so we cannot consume the the best uh, out of the data that we have actually and currently there are a set of activities that we are implementing uh, actually in reconstructing uh, the data structure so so to enable uh, data become more and more available also for 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 public uh, and for use for new use of new technologies yeah so one very good example or relatively good example is uh, the geographic system yeah so we have a uh, very advanced uh, mapping system which we which is used in the building sector and actually and actually we are trying to open up certain layers of the system uh, just for for for, for uh, business and the residents actually to use it yeah and of course uh, the challenge is new services to residents uh, make them more uh, available more uh, electronic uh, and less bureaucratic yeah so the idea is that if the document or incentive or email or, uh, or like electronic document has visit at the Riga City Council, so Riga City Council should process it uh, via, the, via its systems like on their own, uh, not, uh, not kind of uh, playing uh, bureaucratic football with that. A few words about history. Actually, it's not that just now we have started to work uh, towards the smart city, uh, green and digital direction. Yeah, it has been already since uh, at least 2018 when uh, there was a High-level, uh, high-level working group organized by Ministry of Economics, where uh, actually uh, a lot of involved actors uh, uh, were present. Yeah, so you see here in the picture, <laughs> it's me, a little bit younger. Yeah, it's Riga City Council uh, colleagues from Refresh, from Ref Refresh, uh, Riga Technical University, Ministry of Economics, uh, and so on and so on. So at that stage, we have already started to build up certain incentives that could be implemented uh, uh, implemented in let's say uh, today's future and if we move farther uh, and so what are the results uh, i will earmark some of them uh, um, here so one of the results is so-called pilot territories uh, pilot territories where we uh, as a city council would uh, like to enable to test uh, new technologies uh, like on a temporary basis but uh, but with easier bureaucratic uh, burden, meaning that there will be less uh, harmonization.
Viestors mikrofons. Apologies, it seems that uh, somehow I, I was kicked out of the presentation and uh, talked a little bit with myself. But, uh, but let's move on. Yeah, so we have three panel territory. I, I, is it possible to hear me now? Yes, it is working. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so we have identified three pilot territories. Uh, one is in uh, the VEF area where we have IT companies. Then, um, then another one uh, near Riga Technical University where we have a hub for uh, let's say campus uh, of students, uh, certain companies, and so on. It's also a part of uh, so-called knowledge mile. And of course, uh, Twin Council we have University of Latvia with the biotech um, faculty. Uh, faculty. And a uh, few of the things that we have already implemented. Yeah, so we talk a lot about sensor systems. Yeah, so uh, currently we have, uh, let's say, two technologies that we are testing uh, uh, at uh, social service center. So we have a system there uh, which indicates, uh, indicates um, uh, the temperature, the movement uh, of people located uh, there in, in these services, yeah, and uh, also makes it easier for uh, so-called uh, personnel uh, to take care uh, of that uh, people and to check whether there are no alarms or, um, or something like that. Uh, traffic light control systems, there are certain uh, certain crossroads where we have implemented uh, traffic light uh, or smart uh, traffic light which uh, analyzes analyzes the traffic and actually can, can become with the so-called uh, so pro prognosis or forecasting uh, for certain parameters. Uh, few technologies are tested also, also in a public water leakage system yeah, to test whether it's full, whether it's not full, how full it is, uh, how intense uh, the certain, certain places are these, uh, are these le leakages and so on. Uh, and the next steps actually for us is, uh, of course, to start monitor uh, energy uh, in the public buildings uh, in a more smarter way. Yeah, so in general, we have all the information how much electricity we consume. However, uh, we need to split it in the smaller details uh, where we could see like how much do we consume now, why there are pikes, uh, pikes in the system and so on. Lightning systems, uh, there are already at the market a set of uh, so-called ESCO companies, which would provide uh, actually to municipalities an opportunity not to do everything by themselves, but to uh, use the so-called PPP or ESCO principles, uh, no PPP principles, where company, private company is actually servicing uh, a light to the city, thus uh, changing all the lightning system with a more modern and actually, actually consuming less uh, energy in that sense. And uh, there will be at least six so-called mobility spots or mobility areas uh, where uh, at some of them we could try to test uh, the so-called uh, relatively new technologies uh, within, the, uh, within the car charging, uh, wireless car charging, uh, also uh, car sharing and that kind of, uh, that kind of stuff. stuff yeah. So um, <clears throat> to sum up, <clears throat> generally there are a set of incentives that are already integrated in uh, Riga streets, uh, which you probably do not see yet. Uh, but uh, let's say that we are creating a path how to test and then to integrate in the city and then how the city could use all the data, all the modeling systems uh, out of the data uh, existing already there. Thank you. I hope I was relatively in time. Uh, yes. And I'm open uh, to the questions at the end. Thanks. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you for showing what Riga City Council is doing with data. Uh, many data modernization uh, directions uh, projects have started, and that's that's okay. We we I, I think that one of the questions could be how to cooperate with uh, private enterprises which work in Riga. But we come to questions uh, after presentations. Now, <clears throat> uh, let me go to. Uh, Janis Bertis. Uh, Janis is a uh, uh, expert in digitalization for cities, for construction industry particularly. So, uh, Janis, please. Thank you, Armand. So, one moment. Okay, 
So my name is Janis, uh, and I'm the CEO of companies ITED and our association Buvid. So today I'm going to talk about the five benefits of digital construction and BIM. So as Armas mentioned, I'm mainly working in the construction industry, and uh, so I, I'm the CEO of the company ITED, and we deal with uh, the building and very information management technologies and IT technologies in the industry and we try to um, re reduce risks and, and make the industry more efficient with these new technologies. So you have participated in more than 50 different pro projects across uh, different countries where we try to implement these technologies and, and, and uh, make uh, the use of them uh, and make value with them. Another part of my uh, job is managing the Association for Construction and Industry Digitalization. So it's a nonprofit organization which combines more than 40 members from the construction industry, but not only, which are, you know, interested in the digitization of the sector. And uh, so we, we try to uh, work on the uh, national and international interests and also help industries to educate uh, and the people in this industry to educate themselves and, and get to know these new technologies and what benefit they can bring. <clears throat> so I wanted to start my presentation with this graph and it uh, shows the productivity of the construction industry compared to other industries. And uh, as you can see, it's not, not quite good. Uh, the same comes to digitization and there is some sort of co correlation between uh, digitization and, uh, and uh, productivity. And so the more uh, digitized the industry, the more it is productive. So it's uh, kind of logical, but in the construction industry, sadly, most of the jobs are uh, still uh, done by hand. So you need uh, people to build the houses. So uh, it has been lagging behind the other industries quite uh, significantly. But this is changing uh, and it's changing rapidly due to the different new technologies. Uh, and just to name a few of the industry trends right now, uh, uh, so one of them is robotics. So this is something that's being adopted quite quickly. For example, all the major construction companies already own uh, drones to help them in their everyday works. The same applies to those drones used in surveying and etc. Uh, but the, of course, there are, there are not only these drones, but also other uh, robots like uh, the ones that help drive the uh, 3D printing industry. So this is something also uh, starting to become uh, quite quite known in the industry uh, which allows to um, uh, construct cheap uh, buildings more cheaply and more efficiently. The third thing I would mention is artificial intelligence. Uh, so something that um, already some of the speakers mentioned today, uh, it allows to make faster and better decisions from the data that is created uh, in the digital construction process and also by the sensors that uh, feed the information. But the biggest trend in the past decade is BIM. So just to briefly explain what is BIM. BIM is a process, uh, first of all, uh, and it's a process of creating uh, digital information about physical assets. Uh, this uh, process is based on some sort of goals and needs uh, of the parties that are involved. So the parties uh, are uh, not only the contractors uh, or, or the designers, but also the client and the end user of the building. And uh, this process is done through the, uh, throughout the building life cycle, and it allows for bit better decisions uh, at each stage. And uh, other thing uh, is that at the center of this process is the building information model. So uh, what is uh, BIM? Uh, it is uh, a, a model containing and, and is built from information. So uh, when we talk about BIM, uh, we, we should understand three things. So BIM is the digital uh, representation of uh, a, a physical asset, the building, a building, a bridge, you know, a, a road, etc. Uh, the other thing uh, is the information uh, added to the uh, building and the objects of the building. So in, in BIM process, the building uh, contains objects. The objects are represent uh, the ones that you can find in real life. So for example, windows, uh, d 
doors, uh, floors, columns, etc. And any of this object can contain basically unlimited amount of information uh, about this object uh, or how should it be used or maintained, etc. So, for example, if you're a, a person working the maintenance, you would be interested in the warranty information or uh, the manufacturer of the object, etc. So it's very important to understand who is going to use the information to understand what information should be uh, uh, included in the objects. And finally, which is sometimes uh, forgotten, is that uh, BIM is also uh, all the information that is uh, represented in documents about the building and the objects. So let's say the drawings, the maintenance manuals, photographs, or any, any sort of information, even pretty pictures that are created are part of BIM. The building information model. So this is all great, but uh, what is the benefit of all the information? And I'll just point out uh, some of the examples uh, which, which are currently uh, used across the globe. So first of all, I would uh, point out that it's the ability to analyze information. So one example would be sustainability. At the very early stages, uh, you can analyze how to reduce waste and uh, energy consumption by making calculations based on the digital representation of the building, which hasn't, for example, been uh, constructed yet. So in fact, at the early stages can be huge on the uh, later stage of the, of the building when it is being uh, occupied. Other example would be generative design. Uh, this is something that uh, also is part of an analysis where the combination of uh, artificial intelligence and human intelligence is combined and, uh, and a unique design is created uh, by these different algorithms. So this is something uh, also very popular nowadays uh, in, 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 in more advanced maybe economies where you create a very sophisticated design uh, based on algorithms. And then these, this design is also used in the manufacturing to create this, these sophisticated structures. This is, these are just a few examples of the analysis possibilities. There are others like you can use the information to analyze insulation, structural uh, integrities, emergency simulations, etc. So many, many, many options. Other thing, other benefit of BIM is uh, efficiency. So the adoption of the new technologies, the BIM tools, uh, allows to improve the efficiency on, on some routine processes that uh, were previously taking up very much time uh, of the uh, you know, engineers, for example. That would be uh, drawing production, schedule production, etc. because creating an information model, it already contains information to create these sorts of uh, uh, outcomes or, or, or uh, documents, for example. But the other thing regarding efficiency is that uh, the, by the, combining the IT industry, the programming industry with the construction industry and the design industry, you are able to develop uh, uh, algorithms to allow you to create better design. So I had a chance recently to review a, a master's, uh, master's uh, uh, thesis from one of my students and he was, uh, uh, he created an algorithm that allows you to uh, input some basic data about your future dream house. And the algorithm uh, uh, gives out uh, enormous amount of design proposals. So usually you would have, you know, like two or three design proposals from an architect. You know, the algorithm by the means of, uh, uh, of, of different formulas and, and principles like uh, the location of the building and, and uh, the location to the uh, to the sun path uh, makes these calculations and gives out you, uh, to you, you know, a number of uh, very interesting proposals for design you know and it, it it's it's done in a matter of hours you know not weeks or, or months so it's just just an example of how the process can be a, a more efficient than it was usually the third point would be uh, the reduction of error, uh, errors and risks. So uh, one of the uh, uses for BIM, uh, uh, which is kind of the most popular ones, is uh, to uh, do the clash detection. So basically what it is, is that you combine different uh, disciplines from the uh, design phase and uh, try to avoid different mistakes. Uh, and uh, so, for example, 
you know, you have space for everything and it doesn't turn out in the construction phase that you don't have a place for the, you know, ducts or pipes and, and you need to, you know, make some additional holes uh, in some places where it's not that pretty. Uh, and another trend would be in, in the uh, risk reduction uh, is the construction simulation, something heavily used in, for example, United States and United Kingdom. Uh, it's another possibility to analyze the data uh, before something is done in the real environment. So uh, the construction analysis basically means that you uh, uh, simulate the uh, construction virtually and look at the process, you know, from your desk at the monitor. And if a person who understands construction uh, is doing this uh, this review, you can point out the different uh, uh, shortcomings or, or problems that might happen during construction. So it has proven to be very, uh, very, uh, uh, a, a very important innovation in the construction industry to improve the construction processes, which usually are very uh, cumbersome and expensive. And uh, something that uh, the Schneider Electric presentation showed, uh, and, and also I wanted to point out, is the digital twins. So uh, the virtual build, building uh, uh, can be linked with the real environment uh, and uh, with the use of different sensors. And these sensors, of course, feed the different data uh, about the building, and you can you're able to analyze this information and make better decisions on how to make the building more uh, efficient or, or uh, more sustainable, for example. This is something, for example, the UK government has announced uh, they're focusing now of, uh, on this um, digital twins. So basically combining the virtual uh, construction with the real environment. And finally, uh, the cool thing is that uh, all, these, all these new uh, uh, trends uh, actually link together quite well. So for example, the uh, serving, uh, uh, drones feed the information about the existing buildings uh, to the uh, virtual environment where the designer can take this information and compare it with the, uh, with the virtual model of the building. The same as with artificial intelligence, I showed you examples of generative design where, where the, uh, these algorithms help uh, create better, uh, uh, more intuitive buildings. And the same comes for robots and, and 3D printing, where the virtual buildings created by designer could then be printed out by uh, robots on site or, or manufactured in the manufacturing plants. Uh, yeah, nice flowing arrows, flying arrows. And uh, that's about it from me today. Thank you very much. Uh, Janis, thank you. <clears throat> uh, thank you indeed for uh, showing us other modern instruments for uh, making sure that cities become more digital, more modern, sustainable. Uh, we now have seen a lot of uh, good instruments, good equipment, good applications, modern solutions in digital uh, worlds. Now we come to Martin Schwanax, who in a certain sense is the main speaker currently because he, uh, yes, yes, in a way I will say that because he works with the real estate developers and knows the situation from uh, this angle. So Martin, please, your, uh, your statement. Okay, thank you, Armand. Thank you, all, all the interesting speakers. It was really a pleasure uh, to, 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 to follow your presentations. Uh, I must already add a, add a caveat that I'm no expert in smart cities. I already told that to, to, the, to the organizers, but, but still, since our alliance has as its members 29 leading real estate developers in, in Riga, I think I can, I can speak at least uh, for a part of them uh, uh, in, in, in terms of what, what they're thinking. I mean, just to add, an, just to add an, another caveat, I mean, um, I, I feel like that 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 I'm. I mean, you're like having a dessert today, but but uh, I feel that that I'm like entering the restaurant and, and making sure that there there is any food <laughs> available whatsoever. So let me just uh, add uh, two points, which which may serve as a kind of reality check for 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 Latvia and Riga. 
first of all, uh, it, it was mentioned by Martin Zemit is in the beginning, but I think in, in terms of if we speak about smart and sustainable, which which are the terms for for my purposes, I'm you, you I will use almost interchangeably. I think one cannot ignore the fact uh, uh, that 72 percent uh, of Rigans, so inhabitants of Riga, live in the Soviet era uh, apartments. So that is a number which which always sort of strikes me as as basically as 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 something that has to be dealt with. So if we if we speak about decarbonization, which is well, which, which sounds fancy, but the, which basically means reducing emissions. So and and if we have in in, in Latvia, let's say these energy efficient efficiency standards. Uh, for for buildings, you know, which are no, no, normally expressed in, in letters like A B C, I think we would we would run out of the letters of the alphabet in order to attach, you know, proper energy efficiency class to to to, to our Soviet era uh, stock, uh, so housing stock, and 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 that's 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 clearly a problem. And for instance, uh, if we have like this mortgage guarantee program in Altum. Uh, which is our state financial institution, basically, uh, so 85, up to 85 or 90 uh, percent of all the deals which are made using that program uh, go to, uh, to support purchases of, of highly inefficient, energy inefficient uh, apartments. And, 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 and of course, I must, uh, I must say that Altum has, and the Ministry of Economics has, uh, adopted a proposal of ours which sort of prioritizes energy efficient apartments in, in buying uh, in, in, in using the Alta mortgage guarantee program but still that's a, I think that's a huge huge challenge and and secondly speaking of, of, of challenges I mean uh, another statistics which which strikes me every time I, I, I come across it is that in the last 20 years, the the population of the Riga city center uh, has 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 declined by uh, by, um, uh, by by basically by, by a uh, by a very serious uh, by a very serious margin, and 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 uh, so the and and uh, and and what we see currently is that for instance the 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 the, 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 the city center of Riga the population of it. Uh, has been uh, de de decreasing dramatically, but the but the um, but the uh, population on, of the outskirts of Riga, of our new suburbia like Marupe and other other places, is increasing dramatically, uh, and and this op obviously takes a toll on transportation, on congestion, and 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 this is something that 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 I think the city really needs to, to, to deal with in order to reduce our carbon carbon footprint and make our our uh, city more sustainable. But on the positive note, <clears throat> there there's, there are three developments I would like to to, to mention in terms of of, of new um, new real estate development. First of all, all new offices, and this is all, almost becoming a standard, are paying very uh, serious uh, attention to sustainability. For instance, uh, it was not mentioned today, but all these new standards of Bream, Leeds, and Well, these are you know, becoming a standard. Uh, in, in, in office development, which means that basically the, uh, the buildings are adhering and, and, and being designed with, with higher standards in terms of sustainability and connected to that, uh, you know, smartness uh, uh, as, as, as the uh, build, uh, construction regulations would normally ha have you to. And uh, and uh, one thing I think what what the public sector since Armand mentioned that that many of the, in the audience represent the public sector could do is is and what we and that's what we have proposed to the Riga city is to grant real estate tax rebates to such buildings. So if you if you build more sustainable uh, sustainably, if you adhere to higher standards that are normally required, that's the way. How city could uh, could reward you basically, uh, because uh, what what we what we see in, in terms of, of of demand for offices, for instance, 
is that uh, the international companies, especially global business services, which are uh, growing in Riga, have as, as part of their corporate social responsibility policy. Uh, 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 so uh, the requirements to be located in buildings which, which are BREAM uh, excellent or, uh, or similarly certified. So, but I think it is in the interest of the city to have such buildings um, uh, being, uh, to, to have such be, be buildings built. And, and uh, I, I think that real estate tax is, is an instrument, uh, how, to, how to simulate that. The second thing is, I mean, uh, I, I, this was not mentioned too, but I mean, in terms of sustainability and also kind of smart design, what, 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 is, very, what, is, what is very much on the agenda is those, this sort of uh, cross laminated timber technology, which is coming into, in, into construction, which means basically that the, 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 the core structure of the, of the building is, is done by using, uh, by using wooden panels instead of, of, of concrete or cement. Uh, obviously, we, we know that, uh, that, uh, that concrete is not a renewable source, but, but wood is. So, and, 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 and I mean, and, and as I think that's, that's, that's a really a way to go because I mean, we have this paradox in Latvia now that that's, so wooden panels like these cross laminated timber panels are being produced in Latvia, there are factories which do that, but they are being exported to the Nordic other, other Nordic countries, to Scandinavia, and 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 uh, housing uh, housing is is built there using that technology. And obviously, the the experts which are which are which are here uh, could explain how how this basically using sustainable material as wood. Uh, and which and and um, and using cross laminated timber in construction actually presupposes having a highly digitized uh, building and designing process in order to to organize the construction in in, in a different way because it, it basically that the building itself has to be uh, has to be set up using sort of kind of this Lego type of of of, of technology. And I'm, I'm happy to report that the first uh, CLT or wooden uh, office building will be erected in Riga, uh, done by East Nine, the Swedish investors. And also the companies like Marx and others are, are working on first multi-story uh, multi, um, uh, housing like uh, uh, development in, 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 in Riga. And, and thirdly, I would, I would like to mention in terms of urban environment, I, I heard very much what Viestor said about uh, the, the smart initiative on, on the left bank of, of, of Dauga, but also in Veth. Uh, but, but still the city has been, uh, so has invested in projects that are ongoing, which are both smart and sustainable. One, one which I would like to mention is it the, the uh, sustainable water collection system in, in Skanste, in Riga, which basically is the first of its kind in, in the Baltics. That is a, a, um, a, a development which, which uh, combines both building new streets and a sustainable water collection system. The idea is to create canals and a water reservoir, a pond, and the idea is that the water from the surrounding areas flows into this, these, uh, these canals and it can evaporate naturally uh, without uh, having to pump it into the, uh, into the city's uh, sewage system. So, so, so to sum up, I think uh, I think what, what what the city could do and and the and, and the state could do is is tax incentives for smart and sustainable buildings which are not existing currently. Uh, secondly, uh, the the CLT cross cross laminated timber. I think that's a very uh, very sort of attractive technology for Latvia because we can use uh, our wood. Uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a smart and sustainable way. Uh, and secondly, the, these kind of initiatives like, like this, the, the smart solutions in, in BEF and the, on the left bank of Daugava and the sustainable water collection system in Skanste, that's, that these are good examples to follow. Thank you.
Martin, thank you for uh, your uh, remarks and also for concrete suggestions, what should be done and what uh, uh, maybe your sector is expecting and proposing to the city and to the uh, governments. Uh, <clears throat> so thank you, our good uh, cocktail of presenters. Uh, I have few questions. We may we are running a little bit late with time, but still I would like to go uh, at least quickly through a uh, set of questions. First, uh, Dennis, <coughs> uh, what would you expect from the city uh, or from the government? New regulations, new incentives, uh, new yeah. What would you expect from the city? Bearing in mind that Viersters is also here, a representative from the city and from the Freeport, uh, what would you expect? So basically, I can tell you how do we see how we can contribute and definitely to fight uh, uh, with the climate change. What we see. So uh, the number number one is uh, I would say is that uh, we need to use more when we talk about the buildings and part of the smart city to increase dramatically the use of the renewable energy dramatically. So I, I was mentioning also in the buildings. The second point is when we speak about the buildings and smart cities, uh, we see in our company globally and here in the Baltics uh, turning to the electrical vehicles. This is for sure, both on the transportation, both on the individual and so on. This is definitely would be. And the third point key is the way how we use the energy so when we speak about the buildings when i will address this topic particularly and overall about the smart city i think that the efficiency is not on the right level so basically and then you see like this is from the business from the company schneider electric globally what we deal with this and then definitely it's a it's a it's a call for all related as a government municipalities and so on how to turn it the right way is a the policies the regulations and so on. So I would say we see like the three aspects where we could definitely achieve much more, so. Thank you. Uh, I have pretty much the same question to Viestors. <clears throat> uh, Viestors, we have been hearing that, uh, yeah, Martin and Dennis uh, have something to offer, propose to the city and to the government. The opposite, what would you expect from uh, private companies working in Riga? how private companies can help city and jointly to become more digital and more sustainable. Yeah, first of all, it's very weird to hear that uh, private companies are offering us to, to make uh, new regulations. You know, we are happy to make new regulations, <laughs> but it's not always successful. Uh, sorry, it's a joke. Uh, uh, so uh, a little bit, um, uh, uh, to, to say back, so 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 from the real estate uh, perspective, actually we are rework reworking, uh, reworking how we tackle real estate tax. Actually, in Riga City Council, and uh, the, the, these these are very good suggestions uh, that we could elaborate there. Absolutely, absolutely good good suggestion. I do not promise it uh, like earlier than next year, but uh, but this is ongoing process. It just not it it it, it tackles more than uh, just one. Uh, one uh, area <clears throat> and uh, from uh, from uh, private companies uh, no actually uh, we, we would like uh, no to receive to say, let's say uh, the suggestions and to communicate and uh, actually we are doing that in different other formats uh, uh, where uh, we are inviting uh, colleagues no to present to help us out how to how to open the infrastructure because there are plenty of things uh, we think uh, we should do, but we actually should not do. We should find a way uh, not to collaborate. Uh, and um, and uh, in this sense, uh, well, yeah, the trouble is that, that there are several uh, entry points, uh, entry points, and uh, and several like uh, parallel, uh, uh, no, let's say, in, in incentive groups, and not uh, harmonized information at that time. So what we should probably do is to somehow. And, uh, monitor test and uh, and somehow gather uh, also the information and the proposals and then then to to work with them because we have like very decentralized in this sense um, yeah but I, I suppose the 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 best answer would be you not know, to communicate and to listen uh, 
to the private sector players who are who are here and uh, to integrate the solutions. That that's why we are here actually. I hope that uh, we hear some of your suggestions. And if not, then please do not hesitate to uh, to to contact me and actually to blame. <laughs> maybe not so much to blame but <laughs> to contact to reiterate <laughs> yes thank you uh Giannis, uh i would continue with the same question namely uh in order to uh to be uh, in order to use more of those instruments and solutions which you described uh, i think uh different types of stakeholders have to collaborate, cooperate, do jointly planning something else. How would you expect uh, this uh, collaboration, cooperation of different stakeholders, engineers, construction companies, city, government? What should be made here better? What has to be made better here? First of all, to drive the innovation, uh, you need to require it. <clears throat> so, um, requiring it in, in the public tender is it's, it would be the number one step as we know the minister of economics they have set the goal that uh, by um, from 2025 bim would be mandatory in in the public procurement there will be some sort of uh, barrier uh, of of the you know uh, building size or or uh, contract size but uh, still it's going to be a requirement as we see now this is the biggest kind of benefit that the client uh, is requiring uh, BIM and the biggest drive in the adoption of these digital te technologies if, if, if an educated client is requesting these new technologies and this makes the industry also to uh, implement and adapt and etc and of course if there's an educated client and an educated uh, delivery team you know this is a formula for a successful you know creation of a, a, a digital uh, and, 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 and a real building that you know, has all these great things inside. So um, you know, I would say that the, the, the big thing is that you need competence at all, all the ends and you need this, you know, to put this in the requirements. Uh, thank you, Janis. Uh, Martin, uh, Martin Schwanax, uh, I have questions exactly where Janis stopped, namely that we need competence in different parts of uh, uh, how would you describe, uh, how can we jointly, in large sense of words, <clears throat> uh, make sure that the competence in Riga city, Buvalde, in other cities, uh, administration institutions of cities become more, is it good enough already? Is it dramatically bad? What, what is happening with, with these uh, ad administration institutions in, uh, in cities, which are yeah, Buvalde, as we call them in Latvian, which are important partners for the construction and real estate in, uh, industry, and also the uh, um, what is the English uh, whilst uh, um, uh, Bune, uh, uh, what's the expression of this control is Piroys, right? Yeah, yeah. This controlling yeah. office, uh, <clears throat> please, the competence. Yes. Well, thank you, Armand. I mean, I can relate to you an, an example. For instance, we've been proposing this real estate tax rebate on BREAM, excellent or similarly certified buildings, I think for two years already. I mean, we, we personally was, was with the Council on Sustainable Construction with Gins Mitjelson. So I think we, we visited several institutions in the, in the Riga city. First of all, the city development department, uh, then the construction board, as you mentioned, also the uh, the municipal revenue service, which wasn't happy about <laughs> the proposal, I must, <laughs> I must, uh, I must admit. But still, I mean, what what we what we are doing basically is is we are t we are trying uh, to 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 re to relate to the uh, so to the city and its institutions. What are the sort of new standards in 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 real estate development, and what uh, let's say what are uh, these solutions which the city would benefit from but which are not uh, uh, fully covered financially by the market incentives and this is the gap where the city could step in with some kind of taxation incentives 
So and and this uh, this uh, these tax rebates for for uh, for Bream excellent certified buildings are, I think an an an, an example to, to to uphold. So uh, regarding you know the competence or the know how in 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 on on the side of the public sector. I think we well everybody is learning. I mean, I mean, it's just all oh, okay. It sounds like a sort of a rather trivial observation to, to make, but but still, for instance, the the, the construction board has long been a, a problem for for the developers. But I mean, not not exactly in terms of you know uh, how no. I mean, okay. Let's let's just speak speak directly. You know, it was I think up to. Uh, uh, up to two years ago, uh, where you had to submit all the building documentation physically. Basically, you had to print everything out and 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 to carry it with the help of you know some uh, physically advanced persons uh, to the to the to the uh, to the construction board. Of course, we now have the building <clears throat> uh, in information system. Which uh, construction information system, which which allows you to submit the construction documentation electronically, and obviously uh, uh, a next step would be uh, would be uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, of uh, of you know taking it even a step further and 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 uh, making BIM available for the construction board in order to. Uh, to review uh, review projects, not only to the construction board, but perhaps all, also to utility network holders. So I mean, but that's that's obviously a future from from uh, for, 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 from now. So, but but what I would like to to, to point out is that the the Riga City Construction Board, uh, under the, the tutelage of of, of Yanis um, 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 Belkovskis, who is the new head of it, is basically improving. We see the fast track procedure for for big investment projects in Riga. So I think the so the, sort of at least the mood is improving. So I, I think it's just I mean as as everybody in the real estate industry is, is training is 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 educating themselves. So so uh, has to uh, do the the city the city development department and the and the construction board and everybody else. Uh, thank you, Martin. Uh, please uh, make sure that you see that in chat there is a interesting link, which you can watch. It's to YouTube, uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, Martin Zemit is left already. So I will conclude with uh, the sentiments which was expressed right now uh, by Martin Schwanax, namely that there is a hope. Uh, there are good signs coming out from Riga City municipality uh, institutions, first of all, from the construction board, which is indeed essential for uh, uh, making sure that the city goes to, into the smart city direction. And uh, here I want to thank one more time to our uh, speakers, Martin Zemitis, uh, economist and at the European Commission, Denis Katsiha, Schneider Electric Baltic General Manager, Viestur Steps, Chairman Riga City, uh, uh, Freeport of Riga, uh, and member of the Riga City Board's Janis Berchis, Association for Construction Industry Digitalization uh, and Construction Innovation, Martin Schwanax, Managing Director, Alliance Real Estate Developers. Uh, thank you, dear uh, speakers, and thank you, dear audience. We, we meet you again next time in our next seminar. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.